Welcome to Best Kept Secrets Travel, episode 28. My name's Morgan. And my name's Will. 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 And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about the best five places best. to go and visit during August. And it's so important to listen carefully because there are some really good places Including on this episode. Including one of my favourite countries in the world. England. Roll the intro. <laughs> Roll the intro. Best friends and that's for life. Who stay travelling? I'm talking worldwide. 65 countries between the two. Every moment is so unbelievable. Sharing the best kept secrets about the trips and mistakes they made that they can't forget. So tell me if you're ready for a time to remember as they gear up for the next adventure. Yeah. Best kept secrets travel. A lot of people plan their holidays in August, and this first one is one of my top three favorite countries in the whole world, which is one of the best times of the year to go is in August, is Zambia. <gasps> Have you been to Zambia? Not yet. Not yet. That's the correct answer because it is one of the best places in the world where I believe I met the happiest people I've ever come across in any country. Am I not the happiest person you've ever met? No. <laughs> okay. Zambia's peak season extends into August and the combination of cool, dry weather, increasingly thinning vegetation makes it one of the best months to go on safari there. Across the country... Surface water is rapidly drying, and by the end of the month, the animals begin to mass along the rivers, congregating near permanent water in ever-increasing numbers. As pools dry, fish are trapped, and a variety of birds, including the extremely ugly marabou stork, descend for an easy meal. Throughout August, conditions remain dry and clear. Expect cool mornings around 10 degrees Celsius and a warm afternoon that gradually climbs to over 30 degrees Celsius by the end of the month. That's a long day. It's still a good time to see leopards in South Luanga National Park while the evenings remain cool and they begin prowling at dusk. Like July, August is a top month for walking safaris in the more popular South Luanga camps. I was just doing cat, cat, cat visuals <laughs> whilst you're talking about leathers. <laughs> there, there are also excellent game viewing and dry dirt roads. It's a popular month for both fly-in and self-drive safaris all across Zambia's parks. Many visitors also come to Zambia specifically for the fishing. August is a phenomenal time for the very elusive, <gasps> famous giant tiger fish on the Ooh. upper Zambezi River, which actually my mum did catch one of whilst really? we were out there. Yeah, they That's said they amazing. hadn't caught one for a month and a half and went out fishing. Mum caught tiger fish, I caught a moon fish, and Ed caught a, type, fish. a type of green bass. <laughs> it was that really, sounds really cool. a lot less impressive. <laughs> oh, well, really we end funny. up eating that one. Okay, so that so one was we free. let the moon fish go... Had to leave, let the tiger fish go, but then we actually ate the uh, ate the bass, which had Ed caught. Fantastic. A handful of excellent lodges cater specifically for anglers, and camps on the Kafui, Luangwa, and Lower Zambezi rivers also offer excellent fishing for bream, yellowfish, catfish, as well as tigerfish. There's great fishing on Lake Kariba. Year round, but August to October is, is just just the best months in terms of productivity, and it's that really good season for it. With bigger and bigger tiger fish being caught as the season slowly progresses. Fishing holidays on the Upper Zambezi can be combined with a cultural trip to the Likumbi Lia Mize ceremony, which takes place in the nearby town in Zambezi in the last few days of August. Over the five days. The Lavale people of Western Zambia celebrate the passage of their older boys to adulthood with feasts, song and traditional dancing. The festival is particularly well known for its colourful makshi dancers who perform for the crowds in giant painted masks and flamboyant headdresses. As well as this being one of the best months to just visit Zambia in general for the safaris, for the fishing and for just general experience of Zambia. It's also one of the best times in the year to go and do something that Morgan and I have mentioned in previous episodes, which is Devil's Pool. Because the water levels are lower, 
there are certain times of year you're not actually allowed to do devil's pool because mm -hmm. the water's too high and it's moving too quickly. And for those that don't know what devil's pool is, devil's pool is a small water deep pool on the edge of the top of the Victoria Falls on the Zambian side. And you overlook the Zimbabwean side. But from the Zimbabwean side, when you're looking over at Zambia and you see these people approaching the edge of the waterfall by foot and you see them suddenly jump, it looks like they're jumping off the waterfall itself, but they're actually jumping into what is known as the Devil's Pool. And we actually do have an episode on this, and it is the world's best infinity pool. And I think Zambia is a very important country, and the reason that we do these episodes is because we don't think that bucket lists in their normal format are the best, because we believe that most activities in lots of places, and this is very key here for Zambia, you have to go at specific times to experience them in their best way. And August is the month for Zambia. Where else is amazing in August, Morgan? It's Iceland. Iceland. Yeah, yeah. Ding dong. Ding dong. My love for you is growing wide and long. It's nice to hear that. I like you too. It's Summer opposite day. is the camping season in Iceland and August is the best month of them all. The midnight sun in June and July can keep you up sadly all night long, which for some might be a dream come true. While August 16 hours of daylight is enough time to find a campsite and you'll still get some of that lovely beauty sleep. Iceland's wilderness provides some of the best camping in the world. Plan carefully and you can set up camp next to spectacular waterfalls, glaciers, mountain peaks and hot springs. And if you're camping in late August, you might even fall asleep under the northern lights. Now that is on my bucket list. For sure. <laughs> Definitely is. Iceland is serious about protecting its natural habitats and its specific guidelines for camping. Be sure to read up on the rules before you go out. August is the perfect time to embark on the world's best road trips. The, the roads circle around the best known waterfalls, mountains, glaciers and black sand volcanic beaches. Have you ever been on a black sand beach? No. I did in Hawaii and it's weird because it looks so compact. Yeah. And then you start to walk in and it's like, and it's like just normal sand. Yeah, it's just eroded so so much of the volcanic rock over time that it's really soft. How Does it feel very different or just looks? I think looks is the main aspect. Yeah. But if you go on the beach where it's properly eroded over time, then it can be quite soft. Roads in Iceland can be icy for most of the year, but conditions in August are crystal clear. You can switch on the ignition and drive into the late summer sun. So it makes it a lot easier because the best way to get around Iceland is by car and hiring your own car. And August, it is safer and easier for you to drive around. It's a one-of-a-kind road trip encompassing 560 miles of coastline along with North Island. <clears throat> the one-of-a-kind road trip encompasses 560 miles of coastline along North Island. Iceland, the route snakes through peninsulas, passing by imposing mountain peaks, fishing villages, and the natural wonders of, of Iceland. Iceland. Make sure to stop in Reykjavik, the capital, and Dalvik for the whale-watching hub of Iceland. And this route only actually opened in June 2019. And it's it's quite popular now which is quite exciting august is berry season blueberries blackberries bramble breeze cranberries and strawberries these tasty wild fruits are their ripest in late summer the best place to find ripe berry bushes are on the hiking paths iceland offers fantastic hiking year round but the promise of a free snack along the way is a bonus well, summer hiking highlights include the breathtaking Throsmok Volcano Hike in the southeast and geothermal areas in the highlands. Check out our full list of Iceland tours for all experiences. 
when we do a TikTok on the best hikes that you can do in Iceland. Drastic change from Iceland. Slightly warmer is the beautiful country of Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka enjoys a tropical climate throughout the year and the month of August is no exception. The beaches on the east continue to be hot and dry, sublime for some post-safari relaxation. And the beaches on the southwest are also good, despite the odd shower here and there. This means that Galle is a great place to visit, as is the capital of Colombo. For the beaches, the options are pretty much endless, with sun spread throughout Trincomali, Bentota, Welligama, Mirasa, Tangale, and many, many more. The cultural triangle is seeing minimal rainfall and nice high temperatures of the early 30 degrees Celsius, as is the city of Kandy, spelt with a K. The hills surrounding the area of tea country and Horton Plains remain chiller than the rest of the country, and the nights are cooler still. A great event that you can go to in August is the Festival of the August Moon in Kandy, part of the longer Isala Perahira celebrations that run through July and August. Ooh. This will be an unforgettable trip when you take a train ride through the oh, just these beautiful green countryside of Nurara, Elia. It is the best place in Sri Lanka in August you ought not to miss. Without any second thought on the weather in Sri Lanka, stay amidst the greenery of Hela to relish the best of this paradise. So this is amazing. You go on this not too fast, like slow-ish train ride through these beautiful luscious greens and it's one of those trains that have open doors on the side so the classic oh, pictures cool. to get is oh, leaning out. you leaning out and looking and someone takes from another view with your head popping out and it just looks like an unbelievable experience to have although potentially not specific to august but <laughs> yeah, it is cool but in summary august is a fabulous time to travel a unique chance to witness the incredible elephant gathering in Mineria combined with the stunning Asala Purahala in Kandy and bright sunny beaches to end your day with a nice lovely beverage beverage I, I'm already starting to see a slight theme here on this next country coming up we've got English speaking place no they do speak English there. That's good, that's good. Some people. Mm -hmm. Kenya. <laughs> the tourists. <laughs> In August, humpback whales are migrating along the coastline of Kenya. Nairobi and the that's central it. highlands are warm by day, cool at night and receive practically no rain. Mombasa and the coast is hot by day, relatively cool at night and receives a fair amount of rain. The Rift Valley and western interior are hot by day, cool by night and receive a rather high rainfall amazing august is an ideal time for beach holidays on the kenyan coast being the second coldest month and relatively dry game viewing in most safari destinations is good in august august is usually when the migration arrives in kenya from tanzania and prime wildlife viewing season in the masai mara i do like the masai how long did you spend in Masai Mara? Uh, five days? Maybe? Four or five days? My biggest problem with Masai Mara, as I've spoken in other episodes, unless you're really far out in a more isolated place, it's super busy. So say you're going... I've got a question here, set clearly. Say you're going on a trip to an African country that is very specific for safaris and they're, that's what they're in general popular for and you're spending seven days in country what is the how many days of that seven days would you spend on a safari let's say in this question money is no of course seven days yeah because obviously technically there are other things that you can do 
Does this include travel? Or is this, I've been dropped off there and I've got seven days there? Yeah, say you're dropped off in Nairobi. Dropped you... off in Nairobi, I'd probably spend three solid days on safari. Okay. Just solidly. Where you do the early morning game drive, you do the mid to afternoon game drive, and you do a night drive, and you just get shattered. Mm. So you're waking up at 4 in the morning, 4.30 in the morning, going out on the early morning game drive whilst the sun rises then you really start to see the world coming alive. But you also start to see the remnants of the more nocturnal animals. Mm -hmm. And then in the midday to afternoon when it's starting to get, you normally come back around lunchtime, sort yeah. of have a mini siesta and lunch. And then in the afternoon, then it's a little bit cooler. You've relaxed, you've eaten some stuff. And then you see that, come back, have dinner. Then if your safari lodge offers it, and do make sure that you look this up afterwards because certain national parks in parts of Africa will don't allow it at all but night drives if you can do one 100 percent do it that's when you see some super interesting things i've seen whole big pride of lions just devouring a zebra they'd only recently mm -hmm. killed you see porcupines you see everything you see aardvarks there's so much you can see in the night time but i'd go three very intensive days on safari mm -hmm. then four days on a beach okay why it's a follow-up question on one of the things you said. Why wouldn't a place allow night drives? So it depends on the na National Park Zone rules, their mm -hmm. regulation. Um, safety combined with actually respect for the park. Mm -hmm. A lot of places which allow night drives, it's obviously harder to see where you're driving at night in the middle of nowhere. And just they don't they want the animals especially somewhere as busy as the Masamara, mm -hmm. for example i don't think we did a night drive there i can't remember mm -hmm. um because there's so many people they you don't want the lions to literally 24 hours a day have cars around them yeah. they need to be able to hunt mm. whereas the smaller places the really isolated places more likely to allow a night drive okay because the animals they're only seeing one vehicle yeah in their whole day at most mm -hmm. most of them won't ever see a vehicle that day whereas someone like which is a lot busier, less likely to do it. Okay. I think we need to do another episode on African travel at some point. I'm all game for it. <laughs> game. Ooh, game drive for it. Yeah. <laughs> Although safari guides will try their best to take you on to the quieter areas at the right time, if you're looking for a less crowded experience, then consider a completely different time of the year. Humpback whales are often seen along the coastline between August and September, and I do recommend this is what I was just saying to Morgan about having a more beach time at the end of your safari one because safaris actually are very, very tiring if you just throw yourself in and commit it. This is your one time you're there. It's an expensive trip to do it. So go on as many game drives as you can. But then when you're out, I've been scuba diving and you hear the whales. I've been out on the scuba diving boat just waiting and you've seen the whales and they've come wow. up near you. Just the beach, you do see a lot of Africa and also the fish are different to what you normally see. The sea life is different. The beaches are different. So don't forget that that's also a part of that country that you're in. Kenya's quirkiest annual event since it was first held in 1990 is International Camel Derby Festival, a three-day event which takes in place in Maralal, which is usually the second weekend in August. That'd be quite fun. That is I bet it's absolutely insane, though. I agree 100%. I want to highlight that after this episode we're doing a tiktok on that the camel derby yes which is why you should follow our tiktok which is best kept secrets travel all one word no spaces or look for hashtag share the secret and then you'll find our videos because we want you to share the secret which is you've got to share the secret this podcast You've got to share it. You've just, it'd be rude not to. I can, couldn't agree more. One of the best countries in the world for wildlife. This is outright, I do think, in terms of the diversity of wildlife of everywhere I've ever been in the world, this is the most unique. And so many scientists are still going into the rainforest of this country and still discovering brand new species of plants new frogs, new animals, everything. It's insane. Even Bill Bailey went here, 
went on a trek in the forest and they discovered a Strictly brand new type. Dancing. They discovered a brand new type of Venus flytrap. Really? And they named it after him. That would be it. Such That'd be so ex- cool. Imagine, imagine if your tour experience was going somewhere and you just trek out until you find something new, and then but you that's get what it people made. do. Yeah, It'd be a amazing. lot of people go out, they photograph things, and then they go to Come other scientists and, and realize, they say, yeah. "Does anyone know what this is? Let's run it through the databases because you'll you'll see so many things." And then someone will go, "Actually, no, that's a different species." Did you see any new things? No, no. Well, I might have done, but yeah, you don't know. No, I saw loads of frogs. I got. Ed got a um, boa constrictor, wild one. He almost stepped on it. The guy came up and was like, oh, no, it's fine. It's a young one. Just picked it up and put it around his head. Huh. Uh, you see the really cool thing. Oh, I don't like spiders, but they've got uh, crab spiders, which Ooh. look like more like a crab on a web. It's really cool. That but is this cool. is, of course, Madagascar. Yeah, this if you didn't know already. Is <laughs> the only place in the world you can see wild lemurs. That is cool. It has the numbers. If you start looking at their wildlife, the numbers of unique animals that you can only see in this one country are through the roof. It's it's ecologically, biologically, everything logically as diverse and as unique as you can get. August has similar climate to it does in July in Madagascar. The days are cool with temperatures on the east coast reaching their lowest for the year and occasionally even dropping below 20 degrees Celsius. The west and north coast have daytime averages of 22 degrees Celsius with sporadic showers. The south coast is slightly warmer with bone dry, but its waters are cooler than those in the north, which makes daytime dipping all the more refreshing. Intermittent southeasterly winds buffet the east and north coast throughout August with wind speeds ranging between 20 to 40 knots. August is a great time to explore Madagascar's arid regions with the Renaila Forest near Tulia and Isalo National Park, both at their best for daytime trekking. Nosi Borahara and Taumasina, do you know how to say them, are excellent this time of year with the whale season in full swing. Favourable winds in the bay around Ansirana Sakal- Sakalava to Alangnaro in the southeast offers some magnificent magnificent surf. Oh, that was good effort. Oh, that did, was you know, a good effort. did you know any of those? Yeah, I know Nossi Bohara. Um, and it's probably the one that I was actually okay with. Yeah, Tamasina, you said fine. Uh, yeah, to be fair, you're right. Cool. You're fine. Oh, Fantastic. One of your best efforts, probably, in this whole podcast. Nice. <laughs> With the weather at its mildest across the board, it's tough to pick a bad spot in Madagascar in August. For active holidays, August offers the best conditions for trekking, surfing, trail, run- trail running, and kite surfing. August is the most popular time for holiday makers across Madagascar's coastal regions, so you'll need to book a holiday well in advance strong winds along the east coast can hamper scuba diving and i did experience that did you yeah it was so i had only previously i think the year before passed my paddy Mm -hmm. and then we got thrown into what i think was i think the wildlife there is amazing Mm -hmm. in terms of um in the sea yeah if i was going there knowing that scuba diving was a key part of the holiday which it wasn't for us there. We just went out a few times. Mm-hmm. It was probably the worst place I've ever had to try and scuba dive. Really? Yeah, we were on tiny, tiny boats and mm. meter to meter and a half big swells just smashing the side of our boat. Jeez. Um, and the second you got in the water, you could almost not see everyone near you until you went down. So they said, oh yeah, go in the water and go straight so you down. you got to go a few meters down to then see things, see each, each other. Each other, and that's hoping that the clarity is there. But when you come to the surface and then you're trying to find a boat, that's quite scary because oh, okay. then you're all starting to like because you got the swell. Yeah, and, the, well. and then everyone's trying to inflate their BCDs, and you you almost like just want to grab each other and link arms. But then you're so far away, you're trying to. So the best thing to do is almost to go on your back if you see someone. You go on your back and then you kick that way, trying to get near them. Yeah. But some of the dives we did current dives, so then you're moving really quickly even on the surface. That's it. It was quite hectic. Wow. So this really shows how important it is to look at a bucket list more in a monthly 
variation rather than just a singular list, which is why we do these videos and we hope that you really enjoy them. Exactly. And if you have or you're going to book your holiday Which in August based on this podcast, then you need to tag us in your TikToks and in your Instagrams and just anywhere with the hashtag share the secret. And the most important thing you can do for us to help grow our podcast is to share the secret to your families, your friends, your uncles, your aunties, your pets, your colleagues, your worst enemies. We don't care who you share it to, just share it. And hashtag share the secret needs to be sent with that message so they know exactly what you're doing. Because what they're getting is secret information on how to save money, how to plan a trip better than you can get advice anywhere else in the world. Because we are sharing our experiences of traveling to over 70 countries around the world and just refining it. Learn from our mistakes so you can enjoy your travels even more. Roll the outro. Yeah, let's make it happen. I hope that you can handle uh, going on adventures, best kept secret travels. Yeah, all over the globe, having fun. You know the deal. Amazing secret locations. Hang out with Morgan and Will. Uh, educate and entertain. Haggle in the market. Uh, sharing their experiences. Time to get it started. Let's go.